Hi, I'm Kat and you're listening to Cat Tales. In this edition, I spend time with the legendary guitarist and all-round good guy, Earl Slick. He's rock and roll personified. He's played with David Bowie, John Lennon and the New York Dolls and now he talks to me about performing Bowie's Station to Station on a 40th anniversary tour. This is the one with Earl Slick. It's Kat here and I'm talking to uh, Earl Slick, the fabulous Earl Slick at Norwich Art Centre. Fab. <laughs> fab, yeah, FM. Fab. You're fab. So we're here to do um, a nice tour of Station to Station, 40th anniversary, 40 years it's, uh, since it's been out. Mm-hmm. Um, how did it all come about? Um, Tom Wilcox, um, who I met about two years ago with Reeves Cabrels, um, I was doing a, he was doing actually a session for Lisa Ronson, and, and I ended up playing on the track, and, and then Tom contacted me a ways later to do it, and um, it just uh, it wasn't falling into place the right way, you know, and the funny thing was, it wasn't 40 years, it wasn't playing for 40 years, it was just, the reason I even agreed to do it, because I never liked doing things without DB, and um, as you know, that was the one album that was really the best which I would call a really close to close collaboration between me and David. Right. You know, it's my favorite one I've ever done. Right. With him. So, I, yeah, sure. You thought, this is good, I'm going to do, do that. it. I can, I do, can that. do it. But it's not very long. It's only like 36 minutes long. Yes. So, do something else. But we're not going to do a whole bunch of Bowie songs like the record. We're going to do some more own stuff, you know, and we're going to do some Bowie stuff, but we're just going to be messed with a bit. Yeah. Well, that's the best way, isn't it, really? Make it, I'm going to make it like I would do it. I mean, we we were doing that live. I mean, if you see live videos of us, uh, uh, of the touring band we had with DB last time, we took a lot of those songs and twisted them around differently than they were on the records, you know. Bored, you know. Well, is that how you like to do it, then? So you like to get on stage and just do your own stuff well, rather yeah, we than... we take some of the songs ahead of time, you know, at rehearsals and, and just kind of, you know... So why don't we try it, doing it a little bit slower or faster or change it because some things just, just to break it up. Right. When you've played a song enough times, it's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. You can't play them, so. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it needs that to keep it fresh as well? You know, 40 you is do. a long time. You absolutely do to do it because if you keep doing the same exact notes every time, it's not going to take very long before it not only gets stale to us, then the audience is going to pick up on that. And they pay good money to see a show. And they need to get with every single dime that they paid for. Otherwise, Absolutely. I don't belong up there. I'm yeah, not doing my job. That's true. Now, you've been in the, uh, the music career, let me think about this, uh, 40 years? Longer. I know, I was going to say that, but I didn't You're want to. Polite. I was okay. being polite. Yeah. <laughs> so, 40 years. Yeah. Now, you've played with some fabulous people. Obviously, David Bowie, we've spoken mm-hmm. about Station to Station, uh, John Lennon, Yoko mm-hmm. Ono Band, Tom Waits, New York Dolls. I mean, crikey, what a career. How, how have you managed to sustain that? By taking these long gaps in between when I'm offered <laughs> shit. <laughs> I love uh, it. <laughs> I have been spending a lot of time with Buddy Guy for the last year and a half, which has been the most amazing experience of my life. Here's, he's going to be 80 oh, this wow. summer. Um, I think I've probably been on stage with him a good 15, 20 times in the last 18 months. It's every time he's around... I'm invited to play. I fly to Chicago, Brilliant. play at the club with him. And we've become great friends. And he's, a, first of all, he's the real thing. And I was a blues player before Bowie well, we found me. That's what I was doing. What? So when I got the gig, I was excited about getting the call, but I was going, I, I don't really do that. Right. But apparently he wanted that. So it worked itself out, obviously. Yeah. You know? Uh, but now, you know, I've spent a, quite a while now, the last four or five years, back to what I do the best, mm. what I love doing is playing mm. blues. And then and then being able to spend this time with Buddy has been, like, beyond. I mean, yeah. he's a founding father, and you know? He really is. And it's just, it's, it's a great inspiration to make me keep doing it, you wow. know? Wow. Well, so you've been doing that in the States, but you were also over here last year, weren't you, in uh, 2015, when you went to do some stuff the with Beatles. the Beatles, yeah, didn't yeah. you? Mm. That, I guess they do it every year in Liverpool, uh-huh. and I didn't know about it. And Mark Hudson, who put the band together, called me to do it. Because I don't normally like to do those kind of things. Mm. But w- with Mark, it was good because he's got it together, and it's, it's not a tributy sounding goofy, you know. Yeah, so you're picky about what you do, which is great. You have to be. And sometimes you know? it costs me, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather pay the price for the moment than for the long term. I'm stubborn, 
and I do what I do, and if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and sometimes I'm, you know, kicking my own ass, but whatever. <laughs> but, you know, that's what you know. That's what it's all about, isn't mm-hmm. it? You know, when you get to 40 years in the business, it's about choosing what you want to do, not it just is. what you need to it do, is. isn't it? It is. You know, sometimes you do, you, you, you know, sometimes we need to do things, and sometimes you've got to just say no yeah. and bite the bullet. Yeah. But every time I've done that, in short order, the right thing popped up. Looked so after some feet. Always does. Yeah. It always does. Make make good decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, we obviously can't uh, leave the conversation without talking about David. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously passing very just recently yeah. there. What would be your lasting memory of him? The last memory I've actually had, the actual last one, was uh-huh. the day that we both left the studio um, when we finished the next day. And um, how did that feel? You, you obviously didn't realize at the time that that was going to be the it last time. It just like a normal, okay, we're yeah. done with the album, whatever, yeah. see you later, you know, yeah. like a normal end of album. And what kind of mark do you think he's made on the industry? Uh, huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go through history, the first rock star was really Frank Sinatra. And then you got Elvis and, you know, as, and, 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 and Beatles as a group and then the Beatles in their own right. And the Rolling Stones, mm-hmm. who are my favorite band in the world. And, you know, he, you know, the amount of music that he wrote over the years and all the different styles and the fashion and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, because Sinatra didn't write songs, but the fashion thing was there. Yeah. The vibe was, man, the man was just, yeah. I mean, he started the whole damn thing. You know, Elvis didn't write his own songs either, no. really, you no. know, but he... He did something, as David did, that was timely. He knew what to do and when to do it. It's yeah. timing. Yeah, and that's a skill, isn't it? Oh, um, it's a skill, and then there's also a little bit of, okay, I'm going against the grain like a motherfucker here, Yeah. and it's either going to backfire or it's going to work, and you've got to have that because 90-something percent of everything I've got approached or started in this business is blown up in my face. The other eight to ten percent is pure magic. Me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Now of course this week we've had the passing of Prince as well, haven't we? A lot of parallels I think have been made that between was weird. Prince, yeah. Um Prince is a different animal to me completely. You know, he had um definitely made a major mark and he was a major artist. It, it, just as different as Elvis was to Bowie as Bowie was to Sinatra, you know, Prince was, you know that's why they were all icons because they weren't you can't be an icon if you sign the other guy that's we true. saw that in the British invasion but how many bands came out of England I mean Christ I mean in yeah. one year there must have been 50 bands came out of yeah, Liverpool yeah. Yeah. that had hit records how many How many lasted five years not yeah. many yeah. and only once lasted 50 something and it's been the Stones absolutely so you need to have that unique element don't you what that the, little the bit of element that the Stones have is that they got a lust for being on a stage like I do that's what that's what it's about and they've managed to get through all the fights and spats and the bullshit and but when you got something like that you can't let the the, the, the small stuff get in the way and that's you know um, in any relationship of any kind you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna break up because somebody didn't wash a spoon, then, then you're <laughs> yeah. probably not with the right person. <laughs> That's right. You know, yeah. but if you can have it out with, with your mate in the band, you know, because you know, me and DV had a couple of. You have to. It was laughed off five minutes later. That's the way it should be. Sometimes it would take a week. Or, <laughs> actually, one time it took eight years. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, it could be worse. <laughs> but you see, that's the creativity, isn't it? That's a bit of the creative mind, you know? And yeah. it's sort of like you have to have that in the art world, don't you, you really? And you also have to have a connection with the person you, that, 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 that you're creating with or creating for or whatever. You, there's got to be yeah. a, a like-mindedness about stuff, yeah. you know? Because, you, you know... You have to be able to read each other's minds. You really do. That's yeah. really important. You got to be able to anticipate what's going to happen. Yeah, sure. Well, to give a good Not in a literal sense. You know what I mean? You have to get that that connection. connection. Yep. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, now, have you ever been tempted just to stay with that one band and be a band member? I always wanted to, but you know, I've never found the right combination that didn't blow up and. In all honesty, there was there was a couple of times where I would I had put together a band or two, and um, with with, uh, a certain mindset that I had, Uh and um, and the record company was signed the band based on that, 
what it sounded like. And as soon as you signed the goddamn contract, well, you know, you guys, where's the hit? And the rest of the guys would get scared, and they go along with the record company. We'd have a shit record, and yeah. then the band would be broke up. You know, yeah. the only band that could have stayed together was Phantom Rocker and Slick, because we did have, you know, it wasn't major. But we sold a substantial amount of records. We had a top 10 hit that hung in the charts in the States for a long time. Yeah. And some other countries. And we had a top 40 hit that Keith Richards played on as well. Oh, right. Okay. My mistake. Where Keith, you know, and that hung in the top 40 for a while. And um, basically, you know, um, our bad habits just took us apart. That's uh-huh. all. Yes. Yeah. You know. Well, it's hard to sustain these things, isn't it, in the music industry? It is. It is, yeah. So we're here doing Station to Station. Mm-hmm. And then where are you going on from here? We do six dates here. We mm-hmm. do three or four of these in Japan, and then that's it. I mean, um, this was not meant and is not a tribute because it was booked last year. Yeah. I didn't even know David was sick, so it wasn't booked saying, oh, David's going to die soon, so I'm going to do this. No. You know, I did it because I wanted to do it, you know. Yeah. And now that he's passed, I wasn't going to do anything past this anyway, but, the, you know, uh, who wants to be that guy? You know, you know I'm going I'm to... He's gone, and that's that. You know, it that might sound harsh, but the music's there, and that's great. And if yeah. they want to hear it, they can go yeah. see lots of tribute bands. But I, I'm, as being part of it, I didn't want to do that. You know, and plus yeah. I want to get back to what I was doing. You know, been doing. You know, just you know, playing my blues and having a good time. Brilliant. Yeah. And that's all where Bernard on. Fowler comes in. Uh huh. Because one of the reasons I had turned this down in the first place was the powers that be in the UK kept coming up with ideas about singers that were very Bowie-like and I said no uh-huh. why would I do that I'll wait for him to go back out do the real yeah. thing so I said you know I mean if and when you want to come back we'll talk about it and I, you know I want to get the right guy and you know Bernard being with the Stones for a really long time and same roots as I have and he's not just a backup singer with the Stones he's got his own career and he's a hell of a front man yeah. and one of the best singers I've ever worked with and, and, you know, we, we have that connection, you know, um, so, and that's why Bernard's here. I waited, so, you know, we'll wait when Bernard's get a break from the stones and we go do it. And go and do it. And yep. here you are, and you're together with that little bit of magic. It's yep. going to be on stage tonight. Yep. Everybody else is going to be out yep. there looking. That's going to be wonderful. Yep. Thank you very much for speaking to me, Great. Earl. You're absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You've been listening to To listen again to this and other tales, go to cattails.co.uk.